Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel on data science. Uh, it's been quite a while. I've been working on a variety of projects, including this one I'm about to share with you right now. Uh, this was the uh, worksheet or the workbook from the uh, capstone exercise that I did for my IBM data science certification. And this one was very interesting in that it uses the goal of this exercise was essentially to use uh, geolocation data from a variety of sources, uh, one of them being Foursquare, uh, to put together, uh, make a decision in this case about a, a make-believe uh, office or company looking for the optimal uh, location in Charlotte, uh, which is where I'm located uh, for our office location. So I'm gonna walk you through what I did here and uh, walk you through this workbook and how I use the different tools to ultimately make a decision about a real estate purchase. So of course, the first thing we're gonna do, and this is, this is in Python, as I said, it's a workbook, it's a Jupyter notebook. So uh, this is in Python. Uh, you can see here, we're importing all the standards, uh, NumPy and, and uh, Pandas. And we're also gonna be working with some JSON files. Uh, we're gonna be working with a program called GeoPy, which uses, uh, which is a tool to, to extract or pull in ge uh, geographical locations. Uh, we're gonna use Matplot library, uh, sklearn, of course, and then we're gonna use a program called Folium, which is a map rendering program, which you'll see how it renders the maps. So we'll go ahead and get started. We'll bring those libraries in. And just a little, little thing here we did that say print libraries imported when the libraries are actually done. So, you know, again, depending on the speed of your computer, that could take some time. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go out to this to this web page uh, zip codes to go and we're going to pull in the zip codes for North Carolina. Again, I'm located in Charlotte. It's a make-believe company in Charlotte, but we're going to use the we're going to use those zip codes. So it's going to go out and it's going to read uh, the HTML, uh, the tables, and then uh, it's also going to tell me how many tables are on that page. And if you go out to this page, what you'll actually see is there's quite a few tables uh, that are on there. Uh, and there, of course, in HTML, there's always a lot of tables that are used. But you can see, you know, you have a table here, which is really the one that we're after. You have another little table over here, and, and then there's some tables down at the bottom as well. So again, that's this pull, that's a, a, a technique to pull in that data. Uh, and I'm and what I did here was I guessed that it was called table uh, table number one. So I pulled that one in, and I, of course I got my headers here uh, with my zip codes, my city, my county, and then you know I'm not interested in this column right here. So I'm going to have to go and clean up that data. I look at it uh, right now. It's 1,093 rows and four columns, which you can see up here. Um, then, of course, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop some of these columns. That are, I'm going to first. I'm going to drop that first row, which has all the uh, those labels. And now I can see I, I'm uh, 1,091 by four. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop that last column, which I don't need. And now this is what I pulled in. This is what that data frame looks like. So I'm going to rename the columns. I'm going to call this zip code, city, and county. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to store that in uh, a new data frame, but only with uh, Mecklenburg County. So Mecklenburg County is where Charlotte is located. I'm going to pull that in. And then I'm going to filter one lastly for just for Charlotte. And now I'm going to pull that in. And of course, I have just the Charlotte zip codes. Uh, so what I'm going to do is now that I've done that in data frame two, I'm going to go ahead and drop that co that county. I won't be needing that for any further analysis. And now that I look at it, I went from a thousand rows to 74 rows. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and I'm going to pull in. Um, I pulled in a file that had over 43 43,000 zip codes, which basically has the latitude and longitude for those zip codes. So I'll go ahead and pull that in, take a look at it here. And again, this is uh, all over the United States. For, again, it's the, it's the latitude and longitude uh, or the geo point for all of those, you know, the geographical center of that particular zip code. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this uh, column to zip code, and then I'm going to drop all these other ones that I don't need. I, again, I'm mainly interested in this geo point data here. 
uh, and then I'm going to look at it. And now I've split it. Uh, I've split that, um, uh, or I've dropped all this information, and I've really just kept the zip code, the city, the latitude, and the longitude. So one of the things I'm going to have to do as I'm cleaning the data is I have to be aware of the data types. So I just take a quick look at it. And what I realize is that right now it's viewing this as, a, as an int integer, and I really need to change it into an object to do different things with it here. So I'll do that, and then I check it, and of course now it's an object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now merge that zip code file uh, with the um, latitude longitude file the one that I conditioned earlier with just the Charlotte zip codes and then the zip code file that I just had. And then uh, eventually what I'm gonna do here is um, when I pull them all together now, what you can see here is I have a zip code file of just the Charlotte zip codes with the latitude and longitude. Uh, right now it's 83 rows and then I'm going to drop, I don't really need this, it, it has NANs in there anyway, so I'm going to drop that. I'm going to rename uh, the, this, this one here, city, and now we'll take a new look at it here. So I have a zip code, I have, um, and then I have, of course, they're all city of Charlotte, and then I have the, um, the latitude and longitude by zip code. So now that I've done that, um, I can go ahead and when I run this, what I can find out here is that uh, some of these uh, zip codes are not Charlotte zip codes. Basically, I know just from living here and 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 uh, whatever that um, you know a, a Charlotte zip code is a two eight two. Uh, anything else in here, I would go ahead and get rid of. So eventually, what I did here was um, the problem with this is when we did our our uh, our classes, they had the, um, the the little towns or the zip codes had a name to them. Uh, when I did this, I had to actually go in, put in the zip code, and come up with a name for that neighborhood. Again, being familiar with the Charlotte neighborhoods, and, and the, in most cases, it's also on the map. So that's really what I had to do is, is go back, take that condition file, drop out these values that really were not Charlotte zip codes, and then go and give them a name manually. Um, and then, So that's what I did here in the Charlotte CSV file. Uh, once I do that, now we're getting into GeoPy. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in um, the, the the address being Charlotte, North Carolina. And when we run this, it gives us the geographical coordinates of, of this this address right now. Uh, so what we're going to what I'm now going to do is I've taken these neighborhoods, about 40 neighborhoods, and I'm going to go ahead and pull them in uh, using the latitude, longitude, uh, and also the neighborhood name. And when I run this, it's going to give me that map. And again, here's now the zip, the zip codes and the neighborhoods. And you can zoom in here in the Folian map. Um, you can also click, and it'll give you the name of the uh, of the neighborhood. So now that we've done that, these are the neighborhoods that we're going to be working with as we continue to do um, the analysis to determine what are the op what's the optimal neighborhood to locate this office. I'm going to put in my four square information here, and this is this will use the API to go ahead and access four square. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll take a look at our first neighborhood. We'll explore our first neighborhood. And we do that. We see that it's uptown south. Uh, when we run this here, uh, we'll run the latitude longitude. So it gives me the latitude longitude of uptown south. And then I'm going to say, OK, I only want um, 100 venues within 500 uh, 500 meters so when i run this uh, it gives me it gives me a, um, a a url to use and then when i send this in it's going to download a bunch of json data uh, it's hundreds of lines of json data but basically what we're going to do here is we've written a function to pull that json the, the, the pertinent data out of the json file uh, and then when we do that, what this will tell me is that this is an example of the nearby venues in that in that first neighborhood that we decided to look at there. Uh, so you can see here, and this came directly from Foursquare. Uh, Foursquare is kind of like Yelp. Uh, it has information in there about uh, locations, retail location, things things like that. And you can see here, there's a name. Uh, what is it? Uh, what are the cat? What is the category? And what is the latitude and longitude? So this is telling me that it did find four venues. Um, it'll find any nearby venues. And then um, 
you know, we'll, we'll now be ready to do that for that entire, all the neighborhoods that we were looking at uh, for uh, Charlotte. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll come in here, we'll run this, and what it'll do is now it's pulling all those neighborhoods that I had those zip codes for. And these were, these were the manual names uh, that I gave them. So now it'll pull all those in and um, we'll go ahead and we'll look at the size of that data frame. So right now it's 351 rows, seven columns of which you can see all seven of them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it has a latitude and longitude for each venue and it's listing them out. So what we want to do now is we don't, we don't want all the individual ones. We want to group them by the neighborhood. And when we do that, you can see here that, you know, again, it started to group things together. Um, what we're going to do also is we'll run this and we'll say how many unique categories did, did it find? So, for example, if you look up here, you see that um, there's a venue category and it basically found, again, this is pulling data from Foursquare, 135 unique categories. Um, what I'm going to do now is one hot encoding is basically where I'm going to make a matrix of the neighborhoods and all the categories. So this is really going to get very large because what it's going to do is it's going to say if a category exists, put a one there and it's going to create this huge matrix and you, you'll see where this is going eventually. But when I do that, um, it's a very large matrix right now. You can see it's 351 rows, 136 columns. So every category uh, that member was 135 categories plus the neighborhood column, that's 136. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to calculate the mean of the frequency of the occurrence uh, of each category. So it's going to look by, by column, uh, what is the mean occurrence? And, and, and again, you'll see where this is going. Uh, so here it goes, and now it's calculated that. And you can see what this is saying is that uh, in Dilworth, uh, the mean occurrence of an American restaurant, for example, is 0.05 and so on and so forth. So I still have a pretty large uh, shape here. You can see now that, uh, again, I'm 41. It's now grouped by neighborhood. So there's 41 um, and, and there's still those 136 columns. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick run of the, the each neighborhood and the top five venues within each neighborhood. And you can see it creates it within a frame here so it doesn't roll that scroll down your your neighborhood really or your uh, workbook really large now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to create i'm going to put that into a data frame and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new data frame that shows the top 10 venues for each neighborhood so when i do that it's going to give me again i have 41 neighborhoods and i have now the top 10 categories in each neighborhood now I'm going to do a cluster analysis. So in this cluster analysis, what it's going to do is it's going to look for uh, neighborhoods that are similar in that mean occurrence of the venue. And that's how it's going to try and cluster them. So what it's going to do is it's going to eventually what we're going to do, and you'll see when it goes onto the map, is it's going to try and find neighborhoods that are uh, similar and it's going to cluster, it's going to group them together in a cluster. And I went ahead and I've I've run this several times. I've run anywhere from four to 10 clusters. We're just gonna go ahead and leave it at five clusters. So when we run that, uh, again, runs pretty quickly and it's gonna give me, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add my clustering labels. And you can see now I've got my cluster labels. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, merge the cluster labels and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the final thing here I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plot now the clusters. What do they look like? And you can see here again, now my 41 neighborhoods are clustered. Uh, if I zoom in, it's going to tell me um, there's my, there's Spring Lake. It's in cluster four, uh, for example. I can zoom out and go again over here. Um, and this is Ballantyne, which is in cluster one. Uh, so now what I can do is I can go ahead and I can run, um, I can explore the neighborhoods that it put into each cluster. So when I run this, it's gonna tell me, okay, here's everybody. Now remember I did five clusters in Python, it's really zero through four, zero counts is the first one. So this is cluster zero. 
uh, it showed me what was in here. Um, here goes cluster one. Here's cluster two, which only had one in there. Here's cluster three, and here's cluster four. So once we did that, uh, I went ahead and said, okay, of all these ones now, what is which cluster do I find that is really uh, that I'm really interested in here? Uh, what are the ones that seem to have, um, you know, what I'd be looking for in terms of where I'd want to go ahead and locate my office? Um, and we decided that at least manually, as if we first looked at it, that we would focus on the rent, the venues that are the uh, neighborhoods that were in cluster number one. The other thing we did here to confirm that was we went ahead and ran a decision tree and we went ahead and, and uh, I'll show you the, 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 the criteria that we used, but here was the, uh, the, head, the header. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, okay, in a decision tree, we're gonna use the, um, the neighborhood would be our Y and all these factors would be our X's. So the cost, uh, food, location of food, location of a hotel, location of a bar, location of business services. Uh, these were factors that we pulled off of um, another, another website uh, that um, was uh, factors around violent crime, property crime, and commute time were the final factors that we used. So we go ahead and we run this. Uh, again, we just take a quick look at the X's. So again, now we've taken the neighborhood off and then um, we, we'll use dummies for uh, dummy factors for, for the Y. We'll put all this together, um, do all of our testing and training split, and then we'll go ahead and create a decision tree and then we'll run this. And then ultimately what it did was it looked for example at, um, it looked for example as cost being the number one factor. So it said, okay, if, it, if I have a, a value that's less than 189,000, um, I have one that goes this way and I have four that go this way. Uh, so this is kind of leaning you out in this direction. And ultimately uh, when we went and we looked at all the different pieces, uh, we found that um, this neighborhood Eastover was our, our most popular um, our most popular uh, neighborhood or our best optimal neighborhood for our office location. And um, this was the factors that we used here. These were the one, this, these were from the cluster. And you can see here, we had factor zero was cost. Factor one, was, again, was food. I mentioned these earlier. And ultimately uh, using a, a real commercial real estate site online, uh, this was the, the location or the facility uh, that we zeroed in on, you know, based on our budget and, um, you know, the, the cost of, of the, uh, the location. And uh, that is pretty much it, uh, how, how it worked. Uh, very interesting exercise, very, uh, have to use a lot of different skills to pull in the, um, the uh, pull in the, the, the API and the data from Foursquare. Uh, but again, very uh, interesting exercise. And uh, there also is a PowerPoint that goes along with this that I'll go ahead and put the, uh, again, here was the final neighborhood here of Eastover. And, um, and then, you know, one of the things that you learn is, you know, in real life, as we look through what's available in Eastover, uh, even though this was our optimal location, um, the, the location of this particular uh, real estate property was actually over here a little bit right outside of the zip code. So again, you know, based on what we needed and what we wanted, again, for this is a, a notional company, uh, we selected this location as, as our final location. So again, great exercise, uh, more detail will be in the uh, notes there at the bottom of the video. And if you like us, uh, remember to like the video uh, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you.